and also let me basically tell you like even I don't have to really go to basically if I want to uh, you know achieve those kind of randomization I can also do it here so what it essentially I can do so basically this action function is going to run 10 times right and what I'm going to do that you know that what about the login method you know whatever activities that take that 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 is done for login I'm just going to separate this thing out to another function let's say function f1 okay and then this function what about this text to run the test course let's call that f2 that, let's separate that one out then whatever text to browse the book let's call it f3 then basically what is going to happen like you know without basically playing with this multiple actions what I could have done I could have done something like this in that in that previous function in, in, in the previous script where I have this action action script is there so I will take out all those things that is required for login and I'm going to create another function called f1 another function f2 for browse course f3 for browse books f4 for browse login then in this action you know um, in, in this action function what I'm going to do I'm going to call f1 once then in the for loop I can call f2 and f3 multiple times f2 and f3 so that way like you know what I'm going to do I can also randomize and also I can make sure that this is just going to, going to only run one time and then inside that for loop if I give a counter for 10 times then I can ensure that f2 and f3 run for 10 times or how many times whatever whatever times I want I can I can manipulate essentially what I'm saying is that so essentially what I'm saying here is that whatever option that I showed you that is not only the one way okay that is that is we I can I can control everything programmatically all right so those things we are going to see in the next chapter when we will try to enhance the script using C programming language all right but however I will recommend you to use the use the uh, I will recommend to use the runtime setting and use this kind of run logic fundam and so, so use this run logic functionalities and you can change this thing so that is less code and therefore it's more manageable all right and also one more another way that we can do so this is one way that I that I showed you in in some cases you can also insert a block and I'll say this block block zero and insert another block block one in block zero you can put insert action and that is where you call the course okay and in block one you insert another action let's call that as books okay and then remove the course the action that was there here remove item and remove the books okay so essentially what I have done here I have created two more blocks okay and in those blocks I put course and books then what I can do I can give here the percentage as well okay so essentially and also like you now let's say I give it 20 percentage and again another thing that I can I can do I can also give an another iteration here okay so that means what's going to do is going to 20 percentage of time this block is going to run but this is going to iterate four times so essentially this this by adding by inserting block again you can play play with this thing the goal of this all these things to ensure that instead of running instead of running this activity sequentially or one or multiple one one time you can simulate a workload and if we follow my previous course fundamentals of performance engineering the goal of load testing is to test a workload and that workload is very randomized activities that users do all right and so VU Gen have these functionalities to help you in randomization. We'll we'll see much more of this when we are going to run the benchmark. Just let me tell you that there are multiple ways that you can do. There is no standard way, but the best way is that where you need least amount of coding yourself.